Jalen Green is becoming a star before our very eyes as he leads the Houston Rockets to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wins in a row. Let's talk about it. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Summit State of Mind, presented to you by the Apollo Podcast Network and powered by Big City Wings. On today's show, we are going to discuss Jalen Green's current run that has him as one of the best players in the NBA statistically right now, the Rockets' current nine-game win streak, and of course, we're going to discuss the tough stretch ahead for these Rockets as the closing parts of the season begins to loom. Once again, I'm going to open it up with our question of the night. But before I do, be sure to super kick that subscribe button one time at Apollo HOU if you love our content as well as all of our other brethren's content at Apollo HOU. Super kick that subscribe button one time. Just one little click. Hit the bell icon for notifications and you'll get every episode as it happens. So... Question of the night. The Houston Rockets are currently 36 and 35. Golden State Warriors are playing right now. We are currently a half game back. If the Warriors lose, we will be tied for the 10th seed in the Western Conference. So question is, can the Rockets make the play in now? There are 11 games remaining. Can these Rockets make the play in? I want your comment right now. Drop it right here on our YouTube channel. Let us know below this video. Can the Rockets make the play in ladies and gentlemen i cannot believe we are in the month of march the late month of march we're about to turn the calendar over to april and we are discussing the houston rockets currently on a nine game win streak number one over 500 number two another star seems to have been born number three and number four, we are literally at the cup of play in basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, I have covered this team for over three years now as media, as a member of the community, as a fan. Covered this team for three years. I've covered this team at the tail end of the Harden era with Harden and Westbrook. And then turning the page over now towards this team rebuilding and finding their way back to prominence through the draft. And this year, two players have stood out amongst everybody else. They're two players from the 2021 draft class. That's Operant Shangoon. That's Jalen Green. These two players alone have found a way to make this team, Alperen Shingun, before he went down, helping this team get to where they need to go. Jalen Green now upping the ante, finally finding where he needs to go to get this team where they need to be. Back to respectability, back to prominence. Let's talk about the latter, obviously. The player that is playing right now in Jalen Green. I said it in the beginning of the episode. A star is beginning to shine. A star is born in Jalen Green. You got a prime example of that last night. If you paid attention to the Portland game, the Houston Rockets were riding an eight-game win streak, going into win number nine. I had a feeling this game was going to be tough. Not because we were missing Jabari, but because this... It's just... it, it just it, This is what the Rockets have been doing the past several years. Anytime it looks like they're starting to do well and get some type of momentum, they'll go into a game like this and then crumble and then ultimately lose the, you know, ultimately lose all this momentum that you have had. There was one player that made sure that we did not get there. We were down five going into the end of the first half, beginning the second half, down five. There was one player that did not allow that lead to stay put. That we were going to roar back and ultimately win the game by 18, 110, and 92. His name is Jalen Green. He went on one run in particular. This is why I, cre I create the star is born mantra. A star, a, and a star is a loose term. I understand that. It's a term when you think of stars, you think LeBron James, you think Steph Curry. Do I think he's in that category? No, I don't think he's in that category yet. He's playing 
for this month, and I want to drop his stats in a minute, he's been playing insanely this month, but of course, to the level of a Steph Curry and LeBron James currently, I mean, of course not, but right now, right now, statistically, he is playing like a star. And yeah, you can put the argument going the other way. Oh, it's Portland. Oh, it's these other teams that haven't been good. The Rockets haven't played any good teams. Well, duh, the Rockets were eight games under 500 at 27 and 35. And now they're back above 500. And they're not beating sleeper teams. They just beat a, Cle- they beat a Cleveland team a couple, a couple of games ago that is firmly in the fourth seed right now. Third, fourth, fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. So that, you know, bring, bring us, let's go back to it now with Jalen Green. He had a moment in the game. He uh, There's a sequence here where he hit a three, he had a steal, and he had a dunk. That is all in one sequence. In the matter of, I would say, from when the three got hit, 15, 20 seconds. I mean, that is momentum shifting. We were down four at that point. Momentum shifting. We ultimately took the lead by one. A five-point play, essentially, all in all in one sequence. And then there was another play that followed up after the Portland called a timeout. Jalen hit another three, and he had this look on his face. I know a lot, and I may get a lot of flack for it, and I apologize if I, if I disrespect anybody at all, or at least for that moment. And the way he's been playing currently, there's been a look in his eye. It's a look... That only stars can get. It's a look that you piss this person off enough, they can turn it on a dime. You saw it with Kobe Bryant. They call it the Mamba mentality. You see it with Jordan. You saw it with Kobe. You see it with Steph Curry now. You know, you saw it with Kawhi Leonard in the past years. You see it with these players that are great. And Jalen had this look last night that made you go, oh, hmm. That's interesting. There's something there's something there. And he you he got tweaked enough to where he was able to turn on, where he was not going to let this team lose. He even said in an interview, I was not gonna let this Rockets team lose. And the best part about it is when I say star quality, he's he is showing star quality on both ends of the floor, not just offensively. He's putting on great numbers offensively. It's his defense. He always credits his defense as a point of to start up and show out. The numbers going into last night's game. Look, he had three he was he shot 3 of 12. He only had 8 points in the first half. In the past Jalen Green would have sulked, maybe hit a couple more shots and then maybe not hustle his back as much on defense. This is this is what we were kind of accustomed to with Jalen Green. He's like a roller coaster. We didn't know what to expect. But this current iteration of Jalen Green, which I'm hoping and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the permanent Jalen Green for the most part, went in in the second half and took over. And when I said take over, not just offensively, I gave the sequence, but he played the passing lanes. He played in front of the he played in front of the offensive player. He stayed in front of his assignment every single time, whether it was a switch or staying on the defensive end. He played the passing lanes. He had rebounds. He did everything that a star is needed at that moment when the game looked like it was slipping away. Jalen Green put his stamp on the game the way every star should be doing. And he didn't do it just last night. He's been doing it in the Rockets' nine-game win streak. Ever since Shangun went down, we knew. The second Shangun went down, if the Rockets were going to have a prayer at this play-in, if they wanted a chance, Jalen Green had to, absolutely, had to show his merit now and why he was the number two overall pick. This is why you don't give up on these players. And I know a lot of people, a lot of fans included, were ready to give up on Jalen Green. And I understand that because I was, from my perspective, my, my, my patience was getting low too. I get it. We're in year three. Kid's only 22 years old. That's a reminder of how these players tend to develop. He did it accordingly. He took over. He's been killing it. The Houston Rockets in the month of March, recording a league best 11-1 and record in the month of March, sporting a nine-game win streak. Jalen Green, during this run, has averaged 28 points. I pull up my stats here. 28 points, 49.6% from the field. 41% from three, and 80% from the free throw line. That is a 49, 41, and 80 split in shooting percentages. 
That is absolutely unfathomable. Like, it is a phenomenal number that Jalen Green is putting up currently. And it begs the question now, is this is this Jalen Green? Is this the real Jalen Green? Like, is this the player that he is going to be, especially moving forward, especially as these games get tougher, which we're going to talk about in another segment, is this Jalen Green for real? In my opinion, we he may not be putting up the fifth, close to 50, 40, and 80 that he's doing currently, but I think you know there'll be a regression at some point. But I think this is the type of player you're going to get. The type of player with the mentality of fully buying into Ime Udoka's stock and his system and is finally finding his way to make it work, not just with this team, not just with himself, but to find that perfect happy balance to where he can be successful and he can still help this team succeed. Jalen Green is not a stat patter. This, you, the Rockets do not get this nine-game win, win streak without him. He's not a stat pattern. He is helping this team win games. That's the big difference in all of this, is that he is helping this Rockets team currently win games. And without Jalen Green, the Houston Rockets are not in the play-in. They're not even in the conversation for play-in. They're probably going to drop 12 games below 500, similar to what Utah Jazz is doing right now. Jalen Green has been all that and then some. It's been incredible to see. And we're going to see now... As these games ramping up, as the schedule ramping up now, as you know the, these games get tougher, and there's gonna be, and I think seven out of these next eleven games are against playoff battle tested teams, thick of the playoff race. Like these are not pushover teams. We're gonna see what this Rockets team is made of. We're gonna talk about that in another segment. I want to talk about this Houston Rockets team as a whole as well. Last night was a prime example. It reminded me so much of that. Houston Rockets, Sacramento Kings game in 2007-2008 during the 22-game win streak when all hope was lost and Steve Novak hit that big three. This Rockets team just will not go away. That's the incredible thing about this team. They've found the the, the secret sauce that's made it work. And, I, and the best part about all of this, in my opinion, is people think that it's apples and oranges. People think that Shen Goon being out is the reason why this team is succeeding. No, I don't see that at all. I think you plug in Shen Goon, a healthy Shen Goon at that, obviously. I plug in a healthy Shen Goon with a confident Jalen Green. You put these two budding stars and you put them together under Ime's system now. With the current iteration of crop of players we have now. With the confidence level of the two players that we have now. And you're looking at exactly what I said in the beginning of the season, which was the sixth seed, which I thought was the the ceiling of this team. Which a sixth seed in the Western Conference right now is 12 games over 500. I think they could have been capable of doing that if these two players were locked in. I think right now we're at a place where this team has the ultimate confidence, the swagger, the defensive mindset... The offensive output, they're putting it all together. FVV, even for having a bad game, has been incredible. Seeing the team, seeing the players, playing good defense. Jabari Smith Jr., before he missed last game because of suspension, was anchoring the defense. Jock Lawndale has become a godsend, finally healing from his knee injury. Amen Thompson, who was initially a project player coming into the coming in, even though he was the number four overall pick, thinking that maybe he was just gonna be a project player for the year. No. No, sir. Been an absolute killer. Shooting above 55% from the field as a starter. Averaging about close to 10, 11 points a game. Hitting the dunker spot when he needs to. Physicality on defense. Doing all the dirty work. How about Dylan Brooks? Even though he hasn't been playing fantastic. Defense is still locked in. He's right there. These guys have all found a way to make it work. And more importantly... They're all playing together. This team is on a nine-game win streak because they finally all bought in to the system that is before them. They are finding ways to make it work. They are finding the swagger, the confidence, the sauce that makes this team go. And ultimately, ultimately, the Rockets now, being a half game back, for the most part, 
can maybe take control of their own destiny. This is theirs to take it now. It's their chance. This is their opportunity. And with that said, the Houston Rockets have a rough and tumble schedule coming up. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is going to make or break the Rockets season here. We got a game tomorrow. So I'm recording this on a Tuesday. Game tomorrow against the Thunder on a Wednesday. Rock, We got Rockets at Thunder. Then we got Rockets at Jazz. Then we got the Mavs at home. Then we got the T-Wolves away. So Rockets at T-Wolves. Warriors at home. By the way, circle that matchup on your calendar right now. If we win, you better believe I'm going to hop on this post pod. There's going to be a post game. I may pull up with the championship belt. I, you may see me, if this is for all the marbles here, if that April 4th matchup determines whether or not we're going to make the play-in, you better believe I'm going to be insufferable. That's the game, though. April 4th, mark it on your calendar. So moving forward here, we have a game at home against Miami Heat, at the Mavs again, Magic at home, and then the schedule kind of softens up. Every team that I have told you outside of the Jazz away from home, each are either in the playoffs, in the top seed, or in play in territory. These this, these teams are not pushover teams. The Rockets now, for the first time in three plus years, control their destiny. Control their destiny of whether or not they want to make the play in. With this, with this current crop of the current iteration of the team they have now, without Shangun, without Tar Eason, without Cam Whitmore, who's inching closer to being back. This team is more than capable now. We've seen it time and time again. They have these wins. They're right before them. But if they are to make the play-in, this this last stretch of games, these last seven out of the last 11, or eight eight out of the last 11, this is where it matters here. This is where you truly find out if this team wants to make the play-in. They have to learn how to beat these teams. Now, we have OKC's number. But these are teams that are either in the thick of the playoff race, they're trying to maneuver their seedings, maybe they're not, you know, maybe they're trying to go up, maybe they're trying to go down slightly, but these are teams that are not like firmly ahead. They're not comfortable lead or they're not comfortable behind. Like these teams are all in the thick of trying to get to the high seed possible. So the Houston Rockets are playing against these guys. They're playing against these teams. This is it here. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is the entire season now. These last stretch of games is going to be the telltale sign. But good news, Rockets fans, for the first time in three plus years, like I said a few minutes ago, the Houston Rockets control their own damn destiny. I cannot wait for these stretch of games. Like Jalen Green is playing like a star, like an absolute star, turning it on when it counts, learning to slow the game down. Playing aggressive, knowing what the defense is throwing and adjusting accordingly. All the defense playing together on a string. The bench all coming together. Jock Lawndale, Jay Sean Tate, Reggie Bullock. All these guys, Aaron Holiday, have all come together now for a common purpose of saying, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to win. We are going to continue to win. Because this is the team that we are, and we're better than what the record says. I freaking love it. And Jalen Green has now taken the keys and is now the full engine of this team until Alper and Shangun comes back, and then they can finally play together with this iteration of Jalen Green, this version, to play with the version of Shangun that ultimately should have been snubbed as an all star, in my opinion. Put them together, make those two your foundation. Play with the star, Play with those two that you got. Mix them up with the vets. Mix them up with the young core. And keep the grindhouse defense. This team is capable of beating anybody on any given night. This is where the games get fun. A lot of nervousness for the first time in years. We finally have games that are meant for something. I've said this in the last couple episodes. Their playoffs have already begun. It's on the Rockets. They control their destiny it's on them so whatever they choose to do it's ultimately gonna be what makes or breaks this team as they continue to push to find themselves hopefully hopefully 
on a date in LA against the LA Lakers for a chance to make the playoffs. We're going to hope here. By the way, score check right here. Golden State is playing Miami in Miami. Currently losing 24 to 26. So we're a half game back currently. By the time this episode comes out, we could be tied. We could be a game back. So I apologize that I'm not as ahead <laughs> as I could be. I'm literally recording this right now as they're playing. So I'm hoping that I can hope ultimately get there. But I want to know what each and every one of y'all think right now. Look, I put the question of the night whether or not the Rockets can make the play in. But I also want to know what you're thinking in regards to Jalen Green. Is he becoming a star? Is this just a good stretch and then he's going to suck again? Where does Jalen Green stand in your eyes as a Rockets fan? Drop the comment right now. I would love to know how each and every one of y'all feel. it, And I want to know how each and every one of y'all feel with these games coming up. Where are you going to watch it? Let me know. I want to know as Rockets fans. We're all in this together. So where are you going to watch it? You know what I mean? Where are you going to watch these games? Are you going to be in Toyota Center? Are you going to be at home? Are you going to be at a bar? Let us know. Drop your comment right now. I want to know where this fandom stands. Comment right now. Because, finally, like I've said, finally, the Houston Rockets, in three plus years, are playing important basketball. Finally. With players that want to be here. A player that is finally rising to prominence in Jalen Green. With the chance to overtake the Golden State Warriors that have been the bane of the Rockets' existence for the past 10 years. Excuse me. A chance to knock them out of contention. A chance to knock them out of the playoffs. And a chance to put them down, hopefully, for good. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready to go home here on another exciting and fun episode. I love getting in front of y'all. Just getting in front of this camera. Getting on this mic just to talk Rockets, one of my favorite things to do. I really look forward to every time I get to put out an episode, but let's get ready to go home here. But before we go home here, let's be sure to give an ad and a shout out to Big City Wings. That's right, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint, one time. I'm recording this on a Tuesday, two for Tuesday deal right now. We'll get you by five, get 10. That's right, for the price of 10, you get 20. I am a gold fever slash lemon pepper guy. Go find your nearest Big City Wings as nearest to you. That's right. Find it, the best wings in the entire city of Houston. That's right, Big City Wings. Houston's wing joint, Apollo's wing joint, one time. Let's get ready to go home here on another fun episode for y'all. Once again, you can follow each and every one of us on Twitter. That's right, follow our show right now at Summit State of Mind underscore pod on Instagram and on Twitter at Summit, S-O-M-P-O-D. You can also follow our media company at Apollo NBA and at Apollo H-O-U. You can find me on Twitter as well at Summit Commiss. Shoutouts to my um, co-host one time, you can follow him on Twitter as well, at JP underscore Mirabueno. Shoutouts to our Apollo podcast brethren that continue to kill the game. That's right, follow the Astros podcast right now, the crown jewel of Astros podcast, by the way, BTD, Beyond the Diamond. Be sure to give them your first listen for all Astros content. Shoutouts to Apollo Texans, also known as Off the Gridiron. Be sure to give them your first listen for all Houston Texans content. And we appreciate each and every one of y'all for making us your first listen for all Houston Rockets content let's get ready to go home here as my producer gives us the go home cue here and i'm going to end this episode as i end every episode with a go summit go paulo and that's nine games in a row baby just keep winning go rockets oh and by the way watch basketball yeet